Okay, this is my last video before my students will take the Pennsylvania Keystone exams for algebra. Uh, my plan is to spend less than 15 minutes going through a lot of problems uh, to get us ready for the Keystone, where you will have to think, you will have to reason. So I'm going to try to go through some problems. Uh, if you go to my website, uh, my website, I will have, if you scroll down, you're going to see last review for Keystone. Try these. So here's a blank copy of the problems that I'm going to go over. So please open that up, look through, try some problems on your own, and then watch this video. And then you can also just click here for the answers. So I have all the answers, but I also want you to watch this. And like I said, I'm going to do this all in one take. So my mistakes and everything. Uh, also, while you're here, you can watch uh, my other two videos on some ways to use a calculator for example a calculator can tell you all the important pieces of a box and whisker plot so we went through some tips on how to use a graphing calculator that can help you but bottom line is you will need to be able to think and reason and while you're at my website just scroll through see everything that we have been doing throughout the whole year so the keystone is basically our final it is the end all. You can see way back in the beginning, we dealt with domain range and functions. So way back in the first marking period, we dealt with radicals. So a lot of these concepts we've been doing throughout the whole year. So I'm hoping that we can put things together and do well in the Keystone. So let's quickly get started. Uh, here's the first problem. Again, you can see the answer. Hopefully you can try this. There are some reasoning skills. We need to find the correct statement that works for all real numbers. So not just plug it in and say for a 5 into A and say, oh, 5 cubed is 125, which is greater than 25. So make sure you can reason. Go through. I used the calculator and the answer is C. And I was able to show that if I type the left-hand side and the right-hand side in on my calculator, Y sub 1 and Y sub 2, I could go through my table. I could see that I'm getting true statements y sub 1 is greater than y sub 2 no matter what input it is negative zero positives so answer is c to number one next question okay here's a hard factoring problem so this is a problem where you're supposed to simplify by factoring we can only cancel out factors not terms we talked about this we see that these numbers please don't allow these numbers right here to distract you these are the exceptions to the domain any x value except for these and if you see how I have a table here when you input a negative 4 you get an error so they're just telling you the values that you cannot use as x values as your inputs so you can see the work of how I factored correctly I factored out of GCF first and then I factored again and canceled out but again if you watch my one video I can you can actually try this problem type it in at the y equals screen Type in what you feel your answer is, and when you look at your table, your outcomes need to match up. So when you input a negative 1, you get the same outcome because they're the same. So again, answer is D. For this one, some common sense. We are told that the slope of this line right here is up 2 over 3. So we want to know if you go up 6, how far over you have to go. Uh, for this particular figure so we're told this is 4 this is 10 so the difference is 6 and you can hopefully use some common sense you can see all that work that I did the cross multiplying but again common sense should step in so if the rise is 6 the run has to be 9 if you look at your uh, choices here 6 over 9 is the same as 2 thirds so answer is B next question you're going to see a lot of word problems. So you need to reason. Think about it. Put yourself in this situation. Uh, here we're told that X stands for the number of cups and Y stands for the remaining of gallons in a machine. So again, you still need to you know, have some common sense. What they are asking you for is how many gallons of juice are in the machine when it's full? Well, it is full when you use no cups. So when you dispense zero cups, let X be zero and you solve for y, remaining gallons, I can see the answer is 15 gallons. But again, that's a tricky problem, but you have to read it, use some common sense, and it should make sense. It should make sense. They're basically asking you for the y-intercept. So put yourself in the situation. Next problem. Again, a lot of words. A lot of students will be tricked up by the numbers that they see. 
but read and as soon as I read that X blouses, it really means the number of blouses. Y is the number of skirts. So if they're going to give me an order pair, all they're telling me is we purchased three blouses and five skirts. Okay, and this is money. So each blouse was $49. So again, put yourself in this situation. Common sense would reason out that I can plug in that point and get a total, my total bill. So read carefully. Next question. This one, again, we are going to be comparing two types of payments. So I wrote, I did the work where my first payment, you're, you're putting $1,990 down and you're paying $200 a month. Okay. And then the other condition, you pay a little more up front, but then your monthly payment is only 100 And then this is a real life application. When you go to buy a car, you're going to be comparing buy-in, leasing. So you want to know when they become equal. So when your outcomes are equal. So I used a graphing calculator. I typed in the situation. Here's my payment plus 20, or excuse me, 200 times the number of months, which I use my variable key, the X uh, key. Type in both, and I can go to my table, and I can see when X is 10, X is the number of months, we have the same payment, the same total outcome. So after 10 months, they will be equal. Okay, so again, a little bit of reasoning, common sense, you know, think about the situation and you should be able to figure it out. Okay, this next one is just basically an estimation problem where if you have a calculator and you will have a graphing calculator during the keystone, really no need to round until the end. So you can see, you know, how I typed everything in the calculator and the best answer is 6 million. So again, I'm going through these pretty quickly. Uh, next one. Another word problem, make sure you understand what X is, what Y is. X stands for the price of an album, and Y is the price per song. So they give us a system. So everyone in here should know a technique how to solve a system. We learned several techniques. So I used the elimination method, and I could see that an album costs $9. To figure out the price of a song, I can substitute 9 into either equation. I happen to choose the second one and I solve for Y and I got one. So each song is a dollar. You can also see how I typed in at the Y equals screen. If you're going to use a Y equals screen, you need to solve for Y correctly. So be careful. You know, be careful you're going to use a calculator. But if you graph it, you can ask the calculator by hitting second trace at the when you see the graph. And option five is for intersect. And you hit enter three times, and it'll tell you the answer, 9-1. But again, it's important to know what X represents, what Y. And then even if you have the correct answer, you still have to be able to correct, choose the correct option. So in this case, we want a false statement. Well, an album costs six times as much as, as a song. No, it doesn't. It costs nine times. So make sure you understand D is the answer for this particular problem. Next problem. Are you still with me? Factoring problems. Now, on my one video, I show you how you could type this in at the Y equals screen, type in what you feel your answer is, and confirm it that way. But really, we see perfect square minus perfect square. I factored it. It checks by FOIL. But then this piece is still a perfect square minus a perfect square, and I can factor more. So make sure you select the one that is factored fully. Next question. Here again, a lot of words. Students panic when they see a word problem, but not that difficult to figure out if tomatoes are 25 cents each and you're going to buy a gallon of milk. You can write a little e formula, a function that will allow you to calculate your bill. So if you buy 10 tomatoes, they're going to be 25 cents each plus your milk. So X stands for the number of tomatoes. It should be a real simple uh, choice to pick D. 25 cents per tomato plus the, the cost of a gallon of milk. That's expensive milk. Okay, next question. This one, we are dealing with a D equals RT. If you go to my website, one of the first videos that I did was on D equals RT, distance equals rate times time. So this one girl, the girl actually has a three-hour lead, and she's going 52 miles per hour. You multiply that, you can see her distance. So before Jake even takes off, she's 156 miles away. Jake is going to eventually catch up. It's going to take a long time because he's going faster. He's going faster by 11 miles per hour. So every hour he's driving, he's closing the gap. 
because uh, Julia is still driving. So which, which equation, which function represents this situation is going to be C. Okay, it's a difference in their speeds. Every hour he's closing the gap by 11 miles. So again, common sense reasoning is going to help you. Make sure you understand what Y represents, the distance between. So again, read that problem carefully. The next one, we have another system. So you could just simply solve this system. You don't need to graph it. You can see how I was able to get the y's to be opposites, and I could solve for that x is negative 2. When I look at my answers, as long as I didn't make a mistake here, I know it's a. That's my only choice that has an x value of negative 2. And again, if you wanted to, you could graph this on a calculator. You could also check the y-intercept. So this particular line has a y-intercept. We cover up the x term, solve for y. You know the y-intercept is negative 2. You cover up the y term and you solve for x. And in this case, you would have four fifths is my x intercept. And you can match up the lines. Same way over here. X intercept is negative 16 when I cover up the y. And when I cover up the x, this particular line has a y intercept of negative 8. And when you do that, you still confirm your answer is A. Okay, next one a shading, a system of linear inequalities. Uh, first thing I would do before I even look at my choice is. I know the y or the excuse me, the y intercept uh, for this solid blue line going uphill is negative four, and I can tell that my slope is going is positive up one over one, and I'm shading above. So I'm, and the fact that the line is solid, I'm looking for a greater than or equal to sign. This other one, you can see the y intercept, what the slope is, and now look at your choices. A matches up with what I need to be below. Uh, the slope that's the line that's going downhill at a rate of down one over two and crossing the y-axis at negative one and so on. So A matches up with the lines and the shading. Okay, next one. I need to do this in 15 minutes or less because YouTube only allows me to upload 15 minutes. So I'm wasting a lot of time. Here's another problem. A lot of words, but you need to go through your choices and just check substitute in the x do the calculation substitute in the y values so when you go through these you're going to see c is true so if you are flying for three hours you replace the y with a three you're going to see that x has to be when you solve this inequality you get x and read from the perspective of your variable when you solve this x is on the right hand side x is less than 3.16 Okay, and I can write it this way. X is less than 3.16, and I do the other one, and I also get within this range, within this from 2.5 to 3.5, excuse me, 3.15 is going to be my X values. So again, just a plug, plug in, reason. You have to write this down. Do not be trying to do a keystone problem just staring at a computer screen. You need to be writing this stuff down, showing your work on scrap paper, okay, just like I did over here. Next problem. Another problem, reasoning, you need to realize that if you can go 180 miles on 10 gallons of fuel, the rate of change, the unit rate, is that you can go 18 miles per gallon. If you have two gallons remaining, you used eight of the 10, you can still fly 36 miles. Okay? I would want to land soon. Okay, I'm running out of time. We're almost at our 15 minute limit right now. So this is going to be the last problem I'm going to do for this part. I guess I'm going to have to do another part, another 15 minutes to finish these problems. So here's last problem for this video. Uh, we have a lot more to go over. I'll do another 15 minute video uh, after this. So make sure you know how to factor fully. So this ends part one. Please watch the other part. I'll go over the rest of the problems to get us ready for our Keystone exam. Thank you for watching all two of you.